Arab civilization was not defined by the Koran alone. It was defined by this very complex interpenetration. They had the best scientists, the best thinkers, the best philosophers, brilliant, 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 deep, deep figures. And they made uh, origins accessible to us by preserving these texts, by translating these texts. And so, I mean, there's a lot of common ground there. A high Arab civilization is fundamentally uh, Greek. You've made those adjustments. A year ago, I was lecturing in Barcelona, and I went to the uh, Museum of Catalan Art. I saw these inscriptions. Everything was in threes, Arabic, Latin, and Hebrew. Right, I mean, that, that, that's what Moorish civilization was. The Christians were there, the Jews were there, the Arabs were there. That was, that was quite beautiful. Had Arabic civilization spread, instead of being defeated uh, uh, by Charles Martel at the Battle of Tours, we might be living in a far more, far more tolerant world than the world that we're living in. But they were driven back. And here, in Cordoba, in southern Spain, the Caliph founded a library with hundreds of thousands of volumes, called the Jewel of the World, with its mansions, mosques, exquisite architecture, courtyards, aqueducts, and orchards. It was the greatest city of its time. Algebra was invented here. Arabic numerals and the Indian concept of zero were introduced. Ptolemy's works, cataloging the best of Greek astronomy and mathematics, were translated, influencing thought in Spain and beyond to the rest of the world. So many Jews immigrated here from the East that to this day, half the Jewish world is known as Sephardi, meaning Spanish. The multicultural paradise in Spain ended abruptly when a cruel Muslim Berber dynasty came to power in the 12th century. But while it lasted, Spain, under the Moors, was the intellectual center of the world. This was a period in which Islam's presence in, in Spain was a period of great early cosmopolitanism. The tolerance that Islam showed at that time was remarkable. You know, if you go to small towns in, in that region of Spain, you'll find mosques, churches, and synagogues literally nestling against one another, you know, with just gates adjoining each other. Obviously, people lived in complete tolerance and community. That element where there was this sort of philosophical and theological breadth is, I think, no longer something that is stressed anymore because we are so obsessed with talking about fundamentalism the whole time. And it's a real question why we allow ourselves to, to, to give the fundamentalists the right to be the representative voice of Islam, which they're not.